Welcome to a how-to video. I'd like to call this one hugging spree, but it's actually called killing spree. Basically, if you watch my paddle, to get a monster, all I got to do is touch it. Whoops. Is touch it. And you'll see here my streak count and my best streak and that little timer going. Basically, it just detected double kill. Right? I did it fast enough. Or if I get three and then oops, I don't kill anymore. Oh, it knows that was a triple kill. Now, I didn't code in all the other words, but you can see here it's keeping track of the streaks. You can see when I fail, the streak count goes back to zero. It knows my best streak. How do you code this stuff? Let's check it out. All right, so let's see how to tackle this killing spree code. You'll see here I have an object here called globals, and you may recognize the room looks a lot like a room from my point multiplier how-to. Um, basically, the globals object is going to keep track of a couple global variables for us. Ignore these ones up here. That was for a multiplier video. It's these ones down here that we're going to use. Uh, so let's just walk you through the variables that are going to help us out. Uh, one is going to be the streak count. So for instance, if they've been destroying the enemies fast enough within this time limit, and I've just put it two seconds time limit between kills, then the street count adds up, right? So one, two, three, four, just keeps adding up each one they destroy. And best streak is gonna keep track of the best streak they've had. Step time is for those using Game Maker 8. Uh, what this will help tell us is basically it's, if I have 30 frames a second, there's 1 30th of a second between steps approximately. And so that's gonna be uh, my timer that's used uh, to help me decide whether or not they've beat the two second rule for time limit. And time since last. That's basically gonna record um, how long has it been since the last destruction of an enemy. So you know if they can do it within the two seconds, then that counts and the streak count gets to go up and maybe they get a best streak. So let's see how this stuff is gonna work. First thing, I'm gonna take care of the time since last building up as time goes on. So all I'm going to do is, is record the time and I'm going to add on step time to it. So I'm going to do this inside of the step event of this global. And I'm basically going to put my little global dot time since last plus equals global dot step time. Now for those using uh, Game Maker Studio, which probably most of you by this point, you can use delta time divided by one million. Okay, that's basically the same, right? But we know some of you are still using Game Maker 8, but that's basically it, right? The time is going up. Now, as this time goes up, one special thing we have to take care of is, is has this time, time since last destruction of an enemy, has it gone over or equal to global dot time limit right now remember that global dot time limit I had set to I had set to two seconds right so I have to destroy something within two seconds to keep my streak going now if I don't right the global time since last is going to get bigger than two seconds and it's going to be bigger than the time limit I have to do something for now I'm actually just going to do this I'm just going to go show message and I'm gonna go uh, streak broken and I'm just gonna end the game so game end actually let's not end the game let me just put global dot time since last back to zero now I'm gonna come back and change this because one thing is is when you fail to destroy another monster within the time limit what we actually have to decide here is you may want to say some audio sound like triple kill, double kill, quadruple kill. So we have to do a few checks there, right? We want to check to see if they had a streak going or maybe they had no streak going. So I am going to come back here and fill this in. But this will just at least give us a little hint, right, whether things are working or not. So I hit OK here. So that's good for the uh, time going up and failing to kill a monster. Now you'll see here I have player. And I'm just going to code actually getting the monster and player touches the monster. So pretty lame, but it'll work for our example. So when I touch the monster here, 
you're going to see I'll do my little killing spree here. I put hogging spree because I feel guilty that we're using bad words like kill in our video game here. Uh, but the killing spree, basically I want to start checking my variables, right, and changing them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask a quick question. Remember I'm keeping track of the time since the last kill. Now if it's truly uh, the start of a spree, then the time since the last kill is going to be less than two seconds. So I'm going to ask a little question here. If global dot time since last is less than global dot time limit, I know I've built on my spree. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically add to my street count. So global dot street count is going to go up by one. Now keep in mind that their streak starts at zero. And since I'm always making my time since last sort of loop back to zero, if they don't make it, it loops back to zero. The first time they kill a monster, they will get their streak count going up by one. So their streak count will be zero. It'll go up to one. And of course, what I have to do here is I now have to ask, maybe this is a record breaking streak. So if global doc streak count is bigger than global dot best streak, then what I want to do is I want to set my global best streak equal to global dot streak count. Now I'll just sort of leave that there for now, but I'm going to add a little bit more in a second. But you're going to see here that whatever their street count they just earned, whether they just went up to one, went up to two, three, four, five, six, you always got to ask, well, is this the best streak we just had? Because that's one of the variables, you know, we said we would try to keep track of. If it is, remember that best streak. Now, remember, there's actually one more thing we have to do here is since they just destroyed a monster, I want to reset my global dot time since last plunk that one to zero. So the timer basically will start counting up again. Hopefully, the next time they destroy a monster and get here, the time since last will be less than the time limit of two. Their streak will go up again, then it'll go up to two. It'll check, you'll have a new record maybe, resets, and this cycle just keeps happening and happening and happening. And so let's just give this a little go and see what the variables do when we run this now. So I got to kill a monster every two seconds. I'm just not going to do anything here. Oh, you see here, my time since last hit two. My streak has been broken. Okay, now that's good because that's an important part of streaks. Streaks have to end, right? Even though I didn't have a streak yet, you know, we'll go in and we'll change that. But at least it detected, yeah, it failed. The timer starts again. Streak broken. Now let's actually go and get some. So I go one. And you can see here, my streak, and I'm doing it within every two seconds. Oh, I didn't make it. So my streak was at seven. My best streak was updating, right? It matched at seven. And I lost my streak. I took too long to touch that one. And now my streak goes. Oh, you'll see what I did wrong there. When I lose my streak, my streak count, that's one of the things we were mentioning we have to go back and change. We can't let that just keep counting up and up, right? So, as I go through here, let's make that change and then run this again and make sure it works nicely. So, streak broken, that's what we have to fix. So, inside of global step, here was my failed streak broken code. I'm going to take that line out now. I don't need that in there. Time since last goes to zero. And since I failed, global dot streak count has to go back down to zero. And that's really it. That fixes the problem. And I have to sort of start my streak all over again, right? And then what I'll do after I test this, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do some uh, um, fancy let the user know. Let the user know how they did, right, when a streak ends. So let's test this out. I'll be fast this time. I won't fail a streak. There we go. I got one, two, three. I'll wait. There we go. My streak count went to zero. My best streak is still three. You can see my time count is still counting there. You can see my streaks now up to four or five. Perfect. 
streaks broken, it's back down to zero. Anyways, you get the idea. So not a tough piece of logical code there, you know, just a few variables and some ifs and a timer, and it works well. I find there's a lot of little game concepts that can use this idea of a simple little timer in the step, and you record whether the player does stuff within enough time or not. And I find it's great for giving the player a little bit of pressure right in the game to get stuff done. Now, what were we talking about here about let the user know how they did? I mean, this is where I love in games to record my voice and then like make it all cool sounding with uh, like audacity. And then you can ask a couple questions now. Now, you know, a streak of one is nothing special. The streak of one is just basically you had one monster, right? So we're not going to recognize that. But let's ask a little question here, right? We know they just failed to kill a monster in time, right? Time last past the time limit. They might have had a streak, maybe not. So let's ask a question here. Let's do something like if global, if the streak count, whoops, let's actually do this after what I'm about to do because I don't want to set it to zero then try to ask questions about it when I know it's zero. So let's do that one right here. If global streak count before I reset the streak count to zero, let's say it's equal to two. Double kill. I know I shouldn't be using if statements here. It's sort of a sloppy, but it'll work. If global dot street count equals three, show message triple kill. Anyways, you get the idea. You can go on and on and on with that one, right? And I like to play sounds or make certain objects or graphics that pop up, right, for the really good ones. So you could go on for uh, quite a few there. Right, or use the points object that I have in here already made. So when we do this one now, I'll limit myself to just double and triple kills and give that little positive response before the player finishes. So here we go. Let's hope we get our triple kill. So one, two, three. I'll stop. Time runs out. It detects a triple kill. Do something cool. Right? Even if I just do two, even though it's not my best streak, still it knows that was a double kill within that time limit. Now, what can you do with this? Well, you can build onto this all you want. Um, simple ones you might want to change is two seconds might be a little too short, depending on your game. Um, and remember about that step time. I use step time in my code, except really, you know, delta time is probably the one you want to use if you're using studio, which is a more accurate representation of the time passed. Anyways, that's basically streaks, or at least to get you started. Hope you enjoyed that. Use it in your programs. Hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.